How you doing, Martin? I'm doing great. So how are you? I'm doing great. How's everybody else doing? Awesome. Let us know in the chat. Really great to have you here. Thanks for letting us know where you're coming from. Uh, today we're talking People about... Are in there. Yeah. Yeah, we've awesome. got... We got a bunch of people who really want to know more about which bellows to get and how to configure it for macro. Well, thank you all for being interested in macro photography and especially our uh, today's topic, bellows, and how to assemble them. So should, should we start or should we wait for maybe another minute, Matt? What do you think? Well, let me do a little housekeeping. Let me get that out of the way. Um, okay. Please like most of our webinars, um, I'm just going to rip my audio up just a little bit here. Like most of our webinars, uh, we're here for you. Um, all of them, in fact. So come with your questions. If you have questions, put them in right now. Uh, we have a great presentation lined up for you that has really, really walks you through from soup to nuts, which bellows we have and what they work with and which things you could put on either end of them. Uh, Martin did a great job putting that together. Uh, but if you have questions right now, put them in the chat because we want to answer them. That's why we're here. Uh, so that is our primary purpose to answer your questions. But we do have this presentation ready to, for, to give to you. Uh, and we're going to go through that. And it's going to help probably answer a bunch of the questions, but not all of them. So please, please, please ask all of those questions. We love them. And you're the reason we're here. Yeah, that's all the preamble I have, Martin. You ready to get into it? Well, let's let's do this and um, let's tell people what is necessary to achieve stunning macro images, such as the ones you um, were showing to us, to each one of us in uh, your two previous webinars. All right. And I, I need uh, to want, want, want to speak about the contest real quick before we uh, head into it. That, oh, thank you. That's a great prompt. Uh, we have a, a take the macro challenge. Uh, I'm going to pop it over on the screen right now for you guys. Open that in a separate tab. Don't forget about it. If you've taken a macro image of a coin, we want you to enter. We're giving away $500 of NovaFlex gear to people who have a U.S. shipping address. So please, please, please enter the contest. We want to see your best. We want to see what you want to make, and we want somebody to win. So please enter. So grab that link right now, and we'll make sure it shows up in the chat, too. This is not going to go away. Um, Thanks for prompting that. And I want to also give a big shout out to Alan Shapiro. Uh, he gave us those images that let us in. Uh, and they are um, those images that we saw during the slideshow, uh, all the beautiful macro photography uh, are of his beautiful, beautiful work. We've done a webinar with him before uh, and he's doing an event uh, with us and some other people that you're, you're probably gonna like that we can't really announce yet, but it's coming up soon. There's gonna be some cool stuff. All right. Um, yeah, it seems like Martin has dropped out for the moment. Uh, not sure what's, what's happening with him. So I am going to ask him where he's at <laughs> and we're going to check on this stuff. So in the meantime, I think I'm just going to, to hop in and when Martin gets back in, here he is. Beautiful. So, sorry about that. I was uh, That's okay. too quick. On, I was too quick on my keyboard. <laughs> you hit uh, Command Q, didn't you? I yeah. did. <laughs> I have to. I have to confess. Awesome. So, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, shall we? Yes. The slides okay. are on screen. Feel free. The slides on screen. Okay. Novaflex uh, macro kit building. Um, um, Matt uh, was showing uh, was showing us uh, really cool pictures of a coin and several other cool features that he took with one of our bellows, with one of our auto bellows. And we had so many questions coming in the chat, um, uh, coming coming into uh, in by email, and uh, people were asking us, "How do I assemble uh, my perfect bellows setup? I have this camera, I have that lens, I have a manual lens, I have a lens that." requires electronic pass-through and which bellows would be the best for me to start with. And uh, we sort of want to demystify things a little bit for you. And so we uh, created this presentation and uh, well, let's, let's start the presentation. So here it is. Okay, that's us again. Here's a real cool picture that um, one of our employees took, uh, of course, with the bellows and uh, one of our focusing rails. 
uh, an image of a of a giant ant. Of course, the ant is not that big in real life, but uh, it's it's a real cool cool picture. That's for sure. Okay, what we'll cover today: choosing a balance system that fits your needs. Um, why would I want to uh, connect one of our retro adapters to, to the bellows? And uh, do I want to reverse mount my lens onto one of our bellows? What camera bodies and lenses are compatible? And um, after we covered all these topics, uh, we're open for questions. So please um, put them in the chat and we're happy to answer them. And should we not be able to find an answer um, in the webinar, we'll, be, we'll make sure to reach out to you later. And um, of course, uh, I don't know if Matt has mentioned it, uh, this uh, webinar is being recorded as all the other webinars were recorded. So uh, if you were coming in late, um, uh, you can uh, be sure that there will be a recording waiting for you. Okay, choosing a bellows system that fits your needs. Here's a, an awesome image, macro image of a coin again. Um, uh, I think I took this, this image a couple of weeks back, but uh, unfortunately I'm not allowed to enter uh, the contest. So uh, <laughs> I won't send in this image. Oh, you can enter, I would just can't choose you. <laughs> well, unfortunately I don't have a US shipping address. That's my problem <laughs> here, uh -huh. so. Okay, is it re is it really that complicated? And uh, my answer is no, it's not um, as complicated as it looks as it may look. It's uh, actually quite easy. And there's actually uh, three questions uh, you should ask yourself: What camera do I have? Uh, what lenses do I want to use? And um, if I, I can answer that, do I need full electronic pass-through between my camera and the lens? So, for example, if you want to attach a completely manual lens, um, such as this old uh, Mamiya lens, or let's say um, this Schneider flat field lens here, um, this is a completely manual lens. You do not require full electronic pass-through. Then um, it's actually... a a pretty easy thing to hook up your camera to one of our bellows. Okay, uh, let's uh, start with the first scenario, um, APS-C and 35 millimeter DSLR and mirrorless cameras and lenses. Um, for, this, uh, for this size of cameras and lenses, we offer a pretty compact bellows. That's the one here, that's um, our uh, smallest bellows. It's called the Bell F bellows. It's uh, pretty compact. It's lightweight. You can see it perfectly fits into the palm of my hand. That's how compact it is. And uh, in terms of size, it, it perfectly fits to today's um, modern um, uh, mirrorless cameras such as a Canon EOS R, a Nikon Z, um, any of the Fuji X-Mount series cameras. Um, all the all the information, all the data uh, um, related to size are here on the slide, so it's it's actually quite easy. So what cameras are possible? Um, as I mentioned earlier, all the uh, um, 35 millimeter cam DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras are possible. Um, of course, not only APS-C size cameras. If you're um, an avid Olympus shooter, um, you can, of course, also uh, hook up your camera and lenses to this bellows. And um, for all the um, camera systems that are listed here with an asterisk, we also uh, offer full electronic pass-through. Um, these systems, if you want to use system um, lenses from these camera systems, um, you require a full electronic pass-through because otherwise you wouldn't be able to um, control the aperture in your lenses anymore. If you um, want to attach um, fully manual lenses, you do not require full electronic pass-through anymore. And um, we can simply um, build such a such a manual setup and um, an electronic setup later on, and um, then I can show you how easy it actually is to complete such a bellows system. Okay, if uh, I want to at attach a Nikon Z mount camera, uh, a camera Nikon, um, uh, Matt is using as well, it's actually quite easy. Um, uh, I would add one of the adapters that um, attaches our well-known 
A mount camera adapters to the bellows rear standard. It's actually a breech lock bayonet mount. That's the first part that's necessary. This adapter has the order code A flex. And the next adapter that is required is the camera adapter. That's this one here. It has the order code Nick ZA that goes right into this first adapter here. And if I take my Nikon Z6, I just attach it to the bellows. I slightly rotate it so it's back level. And in the front, um, I choose to at attach a manual Nikon lens. Um, on this side, we also need two adapters. The first one is the adapter that uh, converts the bellows front standard to um, an M39 mount. And the second adapter is this one here. It's called the Linic NT. It threads right into this Leica adapter and converts this to a Nikon mount. Okay, the next thing I do is I take this Nikon mount Tamron lens here, which is a fully manual lens, by the way. It still has the manual aperture lever here. So I can open and close the aperture manually. And I attach it to my Nikon mount. And now I've combined these two, uh, these two parts, the Nikon Z6 and the Nikon mount lens. It's as easy as that. And uh, if, for example, I want to use an old uh, flat field lens, let's say you, you own a 50 millimeter or 90 millimeter flat field lens from one of your enlargers, um, most of these lenses come in M39 mount. All you have to do is just unscrew the Nikon adapter again and use the, the first adapter that uh, converts the um, lens standard to M39 mount and just attach your, your camera here, uh, your lens here. So it's as easy as that. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So compatible lenses, we uh, already briefly covered this. There is a, so there's a bunch of lenses available uh, coming from the Canon FD uh, ranges, Contax, Yashica, old flat field lenses, not only in M39 mount, but also in Copal Zero Thread. Um, Leica M lenses, there's some really great Leica M lenses out there, um, not only from Leica, but uh, Matt, you mentioned something about a Voigtländer lens that you absolutely love to shoot with in macro photography. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I have my uh, my Voigtlander aspherical Ultron 35 f1.7 that I absolutely love putting on the, the thread mount on the front of the bellows. It's an incredible uh, extreme magnification lens. I adore it. So it's so, so you see, so there is no not only uh, original Leica M, M mount lenses out there, but there's there's many others that that have the Leica M mount. Yeah. So um, there's M42 mount lenses, there's Minolta MC lenses, Pentax K lenses, Sony A mount lenses. So um, if, you, if you're into vintage lenses, uh, so to speak, just uh, uh, head out to eBay and check what, what cool lenses you can find there. So there's uh, almost no lens that we can't use uh, on a bellows. Again, uh, the lenses listed here that uh, have an asterisk uh, are the ones that require um, full electronic pass-through. Um, we can just uh, convert the bellows to become an auto bellows by just removing uh, the M39 adapter in the front and, oops, and removing the Nikon camera and the adapter in the back. And so the adapter then converts to A mount as well. So let's see what, what we have here. Hold on. 
Sorry. That was my fault. I didn't I didn't well, bring these adapters. This. No, that's fine. Well, Martin's doing this. I just want to say you might be seeing a pattern here. Uh, the bellows is the base unit that you build off the front and the back to adapt to any camera and any lens that's compatible. And the range of compatibility is very wide and very broad. Exactly. That's that's exactly what it is. Okay, we, unfortunately, uh, we have to skip the part with the uh, auto bellows, but we uh, will certainly um, be showing this to you when we come to um, the next bigger bellows, uh, which is the second scenario, 35 millimeter or medium format cameras and medium format and large format lenses, because these lenses uh, usually cover a bigger image circle and um, medium format cameras um, usually have like um, um, bigger uh, bayonet diameters, so they can't be can't be used on uh, the tiny ball f bellows anymore. So they require a bigger bellows um, in terms of size, and that's what we have here. That's our Bellpro uh, line of bellows, which is basically comprised of two different bellows. It's the uh, Bellpro one first. This is, that is this one here. And if you're into product and studio photography and require tilt and shift, that's the Bell Pro TS, which offers tilt and shift on both the front and the rear standards. Again, um, the sizes and the maximum extensions are, are listed here. And the system is, again, is uh, the same in terms of adapters. There's, um, uh, there's adapters for, for manual uh, control, for manual cameras and lenses out there. And uh, these, again, require first an adapter that goes to uh, the NoFlex A mount in the back. the same as with the ball F bellows. And secondly, they require a camera, a camera adapter that converts the camera mount to no reflex A mount again. Oops. Again, Nikon F. And if I want to attach a medium format lens, such as this Mamiya lens here, there's just one adapter required in the front because the Mamiya's bayonet uh, has such a big diameter. So there's just one adapter necessary. I attach it here in the front, just like this. Okay, let me just remove the rear cap. Oops. Where is the red dot? There it is. No, let me put the zero mark. And that's how easy it is to combine these two parts. And of course, there's also adapters for uh, the Hasselblad, uh, for Hasselblad V-type lenses out there, for Pentax 6.7 lenses. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of different adapters, Pentax 6.45 lenses. And um, as promised earlier, we will now um, convert this bellows to become a full, full auto bellows because that's also possible with the Bellpro series and not, not just with the Ball F bellows. And all we have to do is just, we just unscrew this whole portion in the front again. We unscrew the whole portion in the back again. We take the retro adapters. That is one of the retro adapters that is available. This one here is for the Canon EOS R system. 
And I have already attached it to the appropriate bellows adapters because there's two, two adapters uh, necessary that converts the 58 millimeter thread the uh, retro adapters come with by default to uh, the bellows standards. So as you can see, the wire is passing the bellows on the side. Just rotate this so that the mount is in the right position. And we do the same in the back. Oops. Context should be. So let me take my Canon ESR camera. So, and you see, that's how easy it is. A Canon EOS R camera and the 100 millimeter macro lens. Uh, that's actually the 100 millimeter macro lens with the F mount. Uh, using, I'm using here the original Canon EF EOS R adapter. I know that there is a, a native 100 millimeter macro lens and IF mount available, but it was only introduced yesterday. So I could bring it here uh, for you to to see in the webinar, but uh, that's also working very fine as well. So now you saw how easy it is to switch from a completely manual bellow setup to a completely uh, automatic uh, bellow setup. But that is it's really exciting news for Canon users, right? That that macro lens is uh, supposed to be killer. So it, it, exactly. Uh, have you have you read the specifications of that lens yet? I'm I'm still catching up on it, but everybody seems very excited. It 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 is a very exciting lens, at least uh, judging from the specifications. Yep. Okay. Are there any uh, questions regarding all the adapters? We have Not one yet. question. We have sure. one question, um, which I think you're going to get the the full answer to, but we'll we'll ask that right now. Uh, Ruben asks, which bellows works best with a Sony A7R4 and a Sony 90mm macro? I would definitely go for uh, the smaller one, the Bell F bellows. And of course, we have a pre configured kit. Um, and the pre configured kit consists of the Bell F bellows and the appropriate auto mounting and reversing ring. So that gives you full uh, electronic pass-through, which you need for the 90 millimeter lens anyways, to in order to be able to control the aperture. So uh, I would definitely go for this bellows here. But if you plan to upgrade to uh, some, let's say, bigger lenses, some manual Mamiya lenses or Hasselblad lenses, and you know that already, then of course you should choose one of the two Belpro bellows instead makes sense yep okay that makes sense great back to it's funny i'm stuck in full screen there we go back to the slides back to the presentation okay here's another image of um the auto bellows for canon canon eos that's a canon eos 1 1 ds or something a camera of the canon 1d series and a 100 millimeter macro lens. Starting macro image in between. Here's some other uh, good examples of how the Belpro bellows can be employed, the Fuji GFX and our 90 millimeter Schneider Apo Digital lens. Um, on, on the other side, a Hasselblad V type lens and a Nikon uh, D800 camera. And for all uh, people shooting Hasselblad H cameras out there, unfortunately, we do not have a bellows adapter for you people because the Hasselblad H uh, also requires full electronic pass-through. But unfortunately, there's, uh, in our opinion, there's not enough demand to uh, develop a, 
a viable solution for, for this camera yet. Here are some other examples um, for uh, people thinking of investing in the into the Baltra system. Uh, again, a Fuji a GFX camera and a Rodenstock uh, 105 millimeter macro lens. So there's also an, a, an adapter for V-groove lenses, so-called V-groove lenses. And um, on the right side, uh, there's an adapter for um, a phase one digital bag, an IQ4 digital bag with uh, 100 megapixels. So um, if you happen to have one of these bags that has um, an electronic shutter and live view, you can uh, directly attach it to the Bellows rear standards and do not require an extra, an extra camera. But of, of course, the, the bag needs electronic shutter capabilities. Here's another cool example, um, a Leica SL camera attached to um, our Bell Pro TS bellows. Um, if you want to employ it in um, studio and product photography and want to ex expand your depth of field a little bit, but um, don't want to use stacking at all, then the Bell Pro TS can be a real cool or real interesting piece of equipment for you. Another cool macro image. That's extreme macro photography, I have to admit. Okay, um, as I mentioned earlier, we offer pre-configured kits. So um, for all um, for all you Sony shooters out there, for all MFT, Fujifilm X, Canon EOS, Canon EOS R, and Nikon Z users, we offer um, pre-configured kits in terms of um, um, the uh, Ball F bellows. So these kits come complete with the bellows and the um, auto mounting and reversing ring attached to it. So if you want to shoot with your camera and your kit lens or any lens, any native lens out of one of those systems, you definitely want to invest into one of these uh, auto bellows. Uh, Matt, why don't you post the link into the chat to, to uh, the oh, auto yeah. bellows at novoflexus.com. Yep. And for the Belpro Bellows, we have uh, two kits, and these kits um, include the uh, either the Belpro One Bellows or the Belpro TS Bellows, and the Leica thread mount adapter for the front, for the um, front part, and the A mount adapter for the um, rear standard. And all you have to um, purchase in addition is your camera specific adapter and the adapter for for the manual lens that you want to attach. If you do not want to work with um, flat field lenses or enlarging lenses, having a 30, 39 millimeter thread mount. Okay, this slide here has, again, the overview of the kits that are available with full electronic pass-through. Again, Canon EF, RF, Fujifilm X, L-mount, Micro for Certs, Nikon Z, and Sony E. So Ruben, for you, it would be um, the BAL-NEX bellows. That's the one you should should look for, working with your Sony A7R and your 90 millimeter macro lens. Okay, and here's another uh, interesting uh, uh, formula that I want to show you guys uh, because there's uh, so many questions. How do I determine the magnification factor with the bellows? And uh, how do I know uh, what magnifications will be possible uh, when, I in, when I plan to invest in the bellows? And there's an, uh, there's an, well, there's an easy formula to, to uh, find out. So um, for, for non-macro lenses, all you would have to do is to, um, uh, you should know the maximum bellows attention, uh, that includes the all the adapters that are necessary to attach your equipment and then you should know uh, what flange focal lengths your camera has so in this example um, our maximum bellows extension is 210 millimeters plus 18 millimeters for the flange focal lengths which equals 228 millimeters 
and uh, I I want to shoot with a 50 millimeter, so uh, let's say a nifty 50 attached to my bellows, and if I um, divide 228 millimeters by 50, I will be able to reach a magnification of 4.5 type lifetimes with maximum bellows magnifications. So just uh, copy this, this formula and uh, you can just insert your own values and to, to know what maximum magnifications are possible with, with your equipment um, prior to hit that uh, purchase button on our website. Um, like you're about to you give a cool formula? demo on this, right? Oh, Absolutely. yeah, I tried it before. But I, I think your before. demonstration is is really what locked it in for me. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I can't wait for you to, to show everybody here. Let, yeah. Uh, shall, shall we switch to uh, the next slide first and uh, explain the what happens with macro-specific lenses first? Yeah. yeah. And then we head into the presentation, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just... Okay, here we are. Okay, so that was the formula for uh, non-macro lenses, and then there's uh, then there's macro lenses out there. Uh, Ruben, for example, is using the Sony ninety millimeter macro lens, and uh, there's other people out there using a one of five uh, micro nikkor or the uh, uh, before mentioned uh, Canon one hundred millimeter macro lens or uh, for example, the Tamron lens, the Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens that I showed you earlier. And um, what's quite interesting, and uh, only a few people know that uh, all of these lenses employ uh, internal focus shift as well as shift uh, shifting of the focal length to uh, achieve the one-to-one. -one. So they're not uh, changing the uh, entire build length of the barrel. They all do... They do this internally. So um, all of these lenses, uh, when they get focused to one-to-one, uh, -one, they are not having a 100 millimeter focal length anymore, yet they're only having uh, 70 millimeters at one-to-one. -one. And uh, that's something um, lens manufacturers usually won't tell you, and you won't find these information in uh, data sheets on their, home, on their homepage or... Uh, if you uh, contact their customer support, but you can easily check this yourself. If you um, attach your macro lens to your camera, uh, you set the focus to one-to-one -to -one and uh, you measure the distance from the front lens element to your subject. And uh, the distance to your subject is usually twice the focal length in millimeters. So in this case, it would, should be 140 millimeters to the subject. And if you divide it by two, you'll be at the 70 millimeters that I mentioned earlier. So that's something to keep in mind when working with macro lenses and extension tubes or bellows. So, so let me ask you a question here. That's, mm -hmm. that's really important data. Um, mm -hmm. How would that affect somebody when they're planning to do macro? Does that affect mm -hmm. your maximum magnification radi ratio? Or it, why is it, this information practical? Uh, because it affects your maximum magnification ratio because uh, using this lens at 100 millimeter and maximum extension will give, at maximum extension of the bellows will give you less magnification than using it as, at 70 millimeters. So a shorter focal length usually gives you greater magnification. Uh -huh. So it's actually a benefit if it's, its effective focal length decreases of course. as it focuses yep. closer. Got exactly. It. That's good information. So, and the next slide, um, um, again, uh, has the formula that I mentioned uh, two slides earlier uh, and here for macro lenses. So if I set my macro lens to one-to-one, -to -one, we only, what we, we learned, we only have a 70 millimeter focal length at a 100 millimeter macro lens. So we usually would, be reaching three times magnification at maximum extension of the bellows. And if we're adding the one-to-one, -one, the lens is capable of achieving without the bellows, we're at four times magnification at full bellows extension. Okay, um, shall we switch to uh, the other camera and show this, show how this is working? Yeah. 
live. Okay, let me rotate my first camera to show you guys the bellows setup that I've prepared for you. Oops. Well, normally so, I would I would yeah, have so. a three a three camera setup, but uh, today one of my HDMI ca cables tr decided to take a break, so I only have two cameras today. So sorry that for happens. that. It happens. They're fragile. I get it. Yep. Okay. So that is my bellow setup. Bring this in focus for you guys. Okay. Um, let me switch back to camera. So what Martin's going to demonstrate now is, is how you can understand what magnification you're at. Um, this helps you know how large an object is going to be that you intend to photograph. If you know the size of your object and you know the capability of your lens or the capability of your lens plus the bellows, you can know, you can pre-visualize whether you're going to be able to achieve it, whether whether it's in the range of your lens and bellows capability. So this is very helpful information. Okay, Matt, I think a uh, big marker is cropping my image. Um, so really? So you have to believe the values that I'm giving you. So, huh. okay, um, I have I have my 90 millimeter macro lens attached to uh, the bellows. Um, the bellows is fully closed and I have an extension. Uh, that means um, adding up all the adapters that are necessary, the closed bellows. I have an extension of 12 centimeters in between my camera, sen camera sensor and um, the lenses bayonet. And I'm using a um, Sony A6400, which is an APS-C size camera. That means Can I have a- Can we see your, uh, your other camera uh, while you're sure. talking instead of just the ruler? Sure, 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 <laughs> hey. sure. I have, a, I have an APS-C size camera, which means I have a sensor width of 24 millimeters. And I'm seeing um, 30 millimeters on the ruler. Okay, let me, let me, let me switch that again. Oh, and you're not seeing this here in the image, but I'm seeing 30, 30 uh, millimeters on the ruler, which equals uh, a magnification of uh, 0.8 to 1. Wow. So, so if I extend my bellows to the fullest extension, while the lens is still set at infinity, I'm seeing 14 millimeters in my image. What do you guys see? It's only like 11, no, 10 millimeters. Okay, so uh, Matt, we definitely have to, uh, to have to check why Big Marker is apparently cropping our image here. I'm, Bizarre. I'm seeing I'm seeing 14 millimeters on my sensor. Um, Mm -hmm. And at full, We're gonna trust at, full ex at full extension of the bellows, and I have 21 centimeters of extension in between my sensor plane and the uh, bayonet of the lens. The lens is set to infinity, and uh, this gives me a magnification of 1.7 to 1. So now I'm uh, turning uh, the focus dial on the lens from infinity to 1 to 1. And now I refocus using my using my focus rail underneath. And I'm seeing six and a half, six and a half millimeters on my sensor, which equals a maximum magnification of 3.7, so almost four, four, four times life size. Mm. So that's the entire magnification range from 0.8 to 1 to four times magnification. So that's that's a that's a big range of magnification you can achieve with your macro lens and the bellows. Got it. So, so um, using use, using a ruler to find out what magnification you are working at is actually um, a pretty easy pretty easy thing to to achieve at home. So take out your rulers, uh, take out your macro lenses and take images of that ruler. 
and you you know you know uh, you have to know what uh, the sensor width of of your camera sensor. So a full frame, thirty five millimeter full frame sensor would have a width of thirty six millimeters. An APS-C size sensor has twenty four millimeters, and an MFT size sensor has eighteen millimeters of sensor width. That's all you have to know, and then you can do the math your on your own. Right. Well, let's see your face again. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we are. Great. So that that was a deep dive there, folks. This is a this is important stuff, and that's why we record it. And there's a replay, so you can see it. Uh, it's funny how technology abandons you uh, when you need it the most. Our practice was flawless. We assure you. So we'll maybe we'll record a separate clip and, and post that in a place where you can look at it. Um, it's a uh, it's wonderful. It's, look at me. I'm showing my, my ruler over here. It's wonderful. Oh, look at that. Yours just switched back to full screen. There we go. Uh, it's it's pretty wonderful please, how this works please out. Show, please show us your ruler, Matt. Come on. We want oh, to should see I? yours. Uh, okay. Of course. All right. Well, let's see. Let's get... Uh, there we go. We got bring enough. In, bring in some light. Oh, I think it's... My, my histogram says it's good. Nope. <laughs> it's on video mode. So so this is at one to one. Uh and we're seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, twenty one. We're seeing twenty one at one to one. And now if I set it back to infinity and then we roll it back up. <laughs> there we go. And we make it easy. Oops. Hard to reach across there. So we see about 42. So 42. Yep. Okay. So you're not you're not at one to one yet. Not at one to one yet. And that's it at infinity on the bellows. So not quite one to one. It, yep. Exactly. Because your the sensor width is 36 millimeters on your Nikon camera. It's a 35 millimeter full frame camera. So you're right. not at one to one yet. Right. Great. Okay. Um, Moving on. Okay, this slide here has uh, two examples of our auto bellows again, uh, the one for Sony A mount and uh, the one for uh, Canon EOS mount, and the others look pretty similar. Another cool macro image. Well, um, are there? We are open for questions. Are there some questions in the in the chat, Matt? Anything we can? I got I got a question that was asked of me privately. Um, Please do. Please ask. It. And where was that one? Here we go. This one was asking me what, what adapter what was is needed to attach a Nikon 105 millimeter macro to the Nikon Z mount auto bellows. Can the existing FTZ uh, Nikon adapter be used, or is the Nova Flux adapter needed? Um, I. I guess the 105 millimeter macro lens uh, he has has an F mount, and if that's yes. so, he he definitely needs the FTC adapter, or he can use the FTC adapter. Yep. And ha and using the FTC adapter, he has the added benefit of uh, communication between that lens and the Nikon Z camera as well. Yep, because the FTC adapter has electronic pass through as well. Yep. I've, I've done that, not with the 105 millimeter micro, but I've done it with many Nikon F mount lenses. Uh, and it's nice to get the metadata, you know, because then I can mm -hmm. explain what the settings were without having to write them down in notes. So, exactly. Yeah. I think that you were so thorough that you answered everybody's questions because the QA is quiet. I hope so. And the chat I hope is so. quiet. Yeah. You're. Your exhaustive way of presenting all of the details was absolutely perfect. Uh, otherwise, we'd have a lot more questions. Well, shall we speak about focusing rails real quick? I mean, uh, yeah. any any bellows um, sort of screams or requires uh, a yeah. focusing rail underneath. Uh, that's something that's uh, an absolute necessity. Matt is showing it right now. So if you're shooting one of our auto bellows or the uh, Bell F bellows, there's um, there's a focusing rail that um, has the same rail length 
Uh, so it's a perfect fit underneath. That's the uh, Castel Mini 2. That's something. That's a perfect fit. So if you plan to invest in our Bell F or any of the auto bellows, just go for the uh, Castle Mini 2 underneath. And if you uh, plan to use one of our Bell Pro bellows, you should take a closer look of either our biggest rail, the uh, Castel XQ2 or the Castel Q. So Castel Q and Castel XQ2 are both ARCA compatible, so they accept uh, ARCA rails on the top and they also feature, both rails feature the ARCA dovetail on the bottom. So if your tripod has an ARCA compatible quick release unit, you can just slide in the rail and that's that's how easy it is. So helpful. I'm using the, the Q right now and I, I solved, um, I think I, I had a fun solution here. Um, I'm going to turn it vertically so we can, or horizontally so we can see it better. Tangled in all of my HDMI cables here, but I just wanted to show you guys. Um, what I did was I just took um, and I put another Arca plate on the bottom, and I can use this as an unofficial side to side micro adjustment. Um, when I want to have it to be very, very fine, I put my Castel Mini 2 underneath it, but I just put it under there as a cross brace so that this can move side to side when I need it to. And then the focusing rail works all the other times. Hey, here's a cool question by Gino. Uh, could you explain the reason for adding another rail? Well, actually, it's that's quite easy. So uh, the rail is... Uh, oops. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's studio work. Okay, so... Um, the rail uh, the bellows comes with is the rail uh, the both the front and rear standards are traveling on. And um, this rail is responsible for, well, setting the extension between the rear and the front standard. And as such, uh, the magnification you are able to achieve with a certain lens. But um, if you uh, want to focus the entire unit, so the entire unit of bellows, camera, and lens without changing the magnification, you would want to add a second rail underneath, which would be able to move the entire unit without having to change the extension of the bellows. So that's that's the only reason for having or adding another rail underneath the first one. So I hope that explains why there's another rail necessary. Will this rail work with a kit? Absolutely. So any of the aforementioned kits will definitely work with one of the uh, three rails that I've shown you. And why not attach the bellows to a gimbal? Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, you can certainly attach a bellows to a gimbal, but um, uh, right now I see no practical reason why you would want to do this. Um, well, you certainly would need micro adjustments to fine tune focus because uh, in macro photography, um, the depth of field is rather thin. It, it is so shallow. Um, a gimbal wouldn't, wouldn't give you that uh, micro adjustments at all. Uh, do you agree, Matt? Okay, I think, oh, there he is. Hey, Matt, uh, I can't hear you. And I don't know if anybody else can hear you. Nope, still can't hear you. Okay, um, let's see if there's some other questions. Can you hear me now? Did my voice happen? Yep. Good. Yep. Now I can hear you again. Okay, good. Yeah, I was just copying and pasting things. Um, I, I, a gimbal is, is used for, for, for me for different purposes. You could probably put a focusing rack on the gimbal. If you wanted to use the gimbal 
to position yourself absolutely in a certain way, that's a great idea, but it does not replace using a focusing rack. Uh, a focusing rack is so that you can maintain your magnification, uh, but move the entire unit backwards and forth forwards so you can achieve a focus stack through post-processing. So it's absolutely necessary. Good question though. Exactly. And I, and I hope we, uh, answered it, uh, yep. sufficiently. Okay. I think that's it. No more questions here. I think we're good as, as always, if you guys, uh, Oh, explain the function of the focusing rail. Okay. So, um, you know, we have some other videos, uh, that really go deep into this, but I'll make it really simple. When you're shooting macro, you want to set the focus on the camera first. And you want to make sure that that focus is absolutely right. And at that point, you don't use anything else to change the focus. You move the entire camera back and forth. And that little tiny slice of focus that you have, you keep moving the camera back and forwards and taking one picture and taking little slices of in focus. And through post-processing, you stack those images together. Uh, and if you change the focus between shots, the magnification would change and you would never be able to stitch those together. The software would have a lot of trouble if the magnification changes, which is why you focus and then you move the entire unit back and forth. Uh, so with the bellows, you're absolutely going to want to get, unless you like very, very little in focus, you must also pair a bellows with a focusing rack. That's really important to understand that. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get that, and you're going to be like, "Oh gosh, something is missing." So that's why we go. We take the this time to point out that if you're going to go to that extreme macro focus level, you're also going to need a focusing rail or focusing rack. They're both the same thing. Okay, there's another question from Ruben in the Q and A part. Do you have a rail that moves forward as well left to right in one solid unit? Well, actually, uh, that's a good question. So. If you happen to have uh, one of our Castle Q rails, um, there's an easy solution. Just buy a second one and add it to the first one. Just lock the second one down. And now you have a cross-focusing rail, which allows you to move your camera in two different axes. And of course, you can also purchase this as a kit in the first place. So it's available as the Castle Cross Q. But if you happen to have happen to own one of these two, just buy another one and just combine the two to form a cross-focusing rail. You know, asked if I could send him an, an email with the that focusing rail video. Absolutely, I could do that. Yep. In fact, I think that's that's what I just did two weeks ago. That's that's the presentation I just did on a webinar two weeks ago where I, I did a live shoot. So you could see what it looks like through the camera, standing by the side of the camera from the side. It was a pretty fun production. So I think you'll really enjoy that. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, we are here to answer your questions. Obviously, you're asking them now. Um, if you have any questions, there will be a follow-up email. Even the first email you got about this, uh, confirming the registration, you can reply to that and we'll get back to you. Uh, we want to help you. If you're interested in macro and you're interested in how NovaFlex can help you do it, we're here for you. That's our job. So we're still looking for somebody to win 500 bucks. So um, if you can, if you want to uh, join the macro challenge, please take our macro challenge contest and you'll win 500 bucks in gear. What a great compliment to whatever you're thinking of ordering today. Uh, so fun fun and funner right i'm looking forward to seeing all your amazing coin images yeah really yeah. looking forward to seeing those images well martin thank you for the time time and care that you put into presenting what a logical system you have to present to everybody today um it was it was really well done uh, i hope that uh, it solved most questions and again we're here if you guys have more please send us an email uh, hit reply to the uh, the webinar invite. If this is a replay for you, just leave it in the chat. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you, guys. Thanks for being interested in macro photographies and in bellows in particular. And uh, we'll see you the next time. All right. Have a great day.